Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Here we are again. Wednesdays come really fast. I don't know why it never seems like Fridays come as often as Wednesdays do, but <laughs> I do love Wednesdays. Hi, Susie. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Michael. <clears throat> Hi, Irma. How are you? Hi, Rosemary. I'm excited to paint. Hi, Sandy. As I always am. Hi, Trisha. <clears throat> Good morning, Ellen. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Rosemary. So I've got my coffee. I have my plan. So today, what I'm gonna try to do, if I can make it, hi, Gachi, if I can make this work. Let me turn this around. Hi, Mary. Just zoom in, didn't I? I did that once before, and I don't know how to undo that. It's that was not the right answer. I did that the other day and it zoomed in too much. Um, maybe down here. No. Huh. I never knew these little buttons were down at the bottom. I can invite you to join. I'll have to do that sometime. Um, I, whoops, I did it one time. I let people, like if it says people want to join or whatever, and I would love to have people pop in and say hello. But when I did it, then I couldn't save it afterwards. So I'm afraid of that happening. Um, but I do feel like this zoomed in. So hopefully this will work. Something went wonky. I always bump, I always bump things on my phone, honestly. I bump things on my computer. Oh, I bump things, just in all honesty. Good morning, Ellen. So my goal is I had seen some art that's, Someone had done it. I actually can't even remember who it was. But they did kind of chunky. Like, so I want to do my underpainting the way I always do, transparent underlayer. And then I just want to put kind of chunks of color in and not do really any blending. That's my goal. And I'm going to use a big brush the whole time. Good morning, Emerson. How are you? More vase, a challenging object. Well, Joanne, hopefully this will help. I'm going to be a little less, um, a little more chunky. And chunky is the best word I can think of. Let me look at my, that's um, actually one of my champagne glasses. I never have enough. I love like photographing these. And this is on the color of my wall in my living room. But I don't have enough short vases because I don't want my, my, my paintings. I don't usually do such tall, skinny ones. And I feel like there's a lot of dead space. So this is actually a champagne glass. It works, although I don't have enough water in there. You, they often tip over. Talk about knocking things and bumping things. Yeah, I'm like a bull in a china closet. All right, so I'm going to do my transparent underpainting. And just try and keep this kind of in a little bit different. So I'm always kind of trying to push what I do a little bit. So that I learn new things. Take risks. Like I always say to do, I got to do it myself too, right? So I should try to do that even kind of in this layer, keep it very, um, very loose. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. Good morning, Allie. Ellen, yes, they're ranunculus. I'm sure they're from market. Where else would I find? Oops, I don't want that red. I got red on my brush. I got to clean that off. I don't want that. Good morning, Mary Eileen. How are you? Hi, Kim Deaton Art. I'm not sure what color I should do in that background to keep it um, kind of uh, neutral. Oh, with Mia. Hi, Mia. <clears throat> oh, good, Mary Eileen. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, I think I'm just going to do yellow in this one up here. And 
And that fun little bud right there. And a little more pink. I feel like my paint's dry today. Sometimes it does feel that way to me. Sometimes drier than other days. <clears throat> but I don't want it drips, drippy from Vita. Snowy Toronto. Has it been snowing there a lot? I think we're expecting more snow here too in the next couple of days. I'm not entirely sure. I really should watch the news more than I do. I would actually know what's happening. <laughs> now, who could fit that in, right? greens in here so people popping in what my goal is today to try and keep this very loose and spontaneous and not um, like do big chunks of color when I do my this is my transparent underpainting but when I go over top of it <clears throat> I've been busy getting like applying to outdoor art shows <coughs> planning my year Excuse me, Susie says we have sleep right now, not quite turning over to snow yet. It's been unusually cold here too. I'm hoping that, um, <laughs> I'm hoping for spring is what I'm hoping for. <clears throat> I guess I could use some blue to kind of create where that vase is. <clears throat> Kind of just get where my shape is. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Deb. Thanks, Ellen. Get my shadow. Mm, I think I will put my horizon line in there. So I need that background. Maybe I'll do kind of a brownish, bluish color back there. Nothing bright. I want to. Been trying to use more subtle colors. I'm. I love color so much. It's hard to like use. Um, what is it called? Restraint. I want to put color everywhere. I want all the colors to pop. But if all your colors pop, then nothing is the star of the show. So using that restraint has been something I've been trying really hard to pay attention to and take into consideration as I paint to have the pauses. <clears throat> yeah, life is noisy, isn't it? <clears throat> Need paintings to be noisy too. Yeah, I brought my, I was working on that large painting because I have a show at Red Raven Art Gallery in March. So I still would like to do a few more new pieces. Plus for outdoor art shows, I have a, really should work on a lot of things. But um, <clears throat> I brought it back into my studio. I had it on my mantle. I always live with things for a little while and think about it. And I actually posted and asked if I was finished or not. And I got a lot of interesting comments. I do love feedback like that and there were some areas in it that were kind of bothering me so I brought it back in the studio and went back into it again yesterday and I'm liking it it did need a little bit more work and I had to do the edges too I don't like doing the sides and I can't decide if I should frame it or leave it unframed I haven't decided that yet <clears throat> maybe I'll do so that's going to be a brighter kind of white color in there. Um, no, so sometimes I use my manganese blue hue behind that, but that's going to be, I think, just, just too bright. So I'm actually just going to kind of more just put my medium there instead of adding any color. Oops, now I, I have, um, I feel like I'm taking paint away. I have too much medium on my brush. 
kind of a delicate balance of having too much and not enough um, on your brush. Put a couple dark areas in here so I don't forget my dark darks. <clears throat> bit of the background in there that's okay I think that's a good start um I'm looking there's too much glare on there is there is that better I don't know how to keep it uh, lit brightly without glare but that that's definitely better you guys can see that better right uh this is oil paint I used to use gouache a lot when I was in college, but haven't in a long time. I actually found my old gouache. I should see if it's still, um, if it still is uh, usable. All right, so I need to mix up some some pinks, some kind of golden yellows, light pinks, and then a fun neutral background color. And I want to keep it very very simple. So and greens, of course, I need greens too. Oh, thank you, Ellen. All right, <clears throat> let me turn this down here. Let's see if I get this where you can see it okay. All right, I think that's good. Let's straighten this out. I need a sip of my coffee. What's everybody having this morning? Coffee or tea or Diet Coke? My husband drinks Diet Coke every morning. Ugh. And it's not something I ever like. Maybe, maybe with a piece of pizza if there's no beer to be had. But probably not. I'll put a touch of dark in there. Peppermint tea. Oh, that sounds good. Lemonade. That's a fun idea to have lemonade in the morning, like lemon water, warm lemon. I started to do that warm lemon water thing and I keep forgetting. Nectar of the gods. I love coffee too. Need us having coffee. Um, I should put more of my pink out here. A little more vibrant coffee with a dash of cocoa and cinnamon. Irma, that sounds really good. Coffee with cocoa and cinnamon. Put a little bit more. Um, this is a trans radiant pink. I feel like I need a really bright pink. This is Gamblin's radi oh, radiant magenta. I think I need more of that. I just ordered art supplies. Like, I feel like. The last couple of weeks, I've been obsessively ordering art supplies. They all haven't gotten here yet, but um, look, I keep finding more things. I feel like I just ran out of everything at the same time. Do you ever do that? It feels like all of a sudden you have no art supplies. That's nice. Oh, that's what I wanted. Much brighter. Watermelon. Ellen says, Irma, me too. Are you having fat cow coffee, Ellen? That's what I'm having. Ethiopian. Oh, those are nice pinks. Um, <clears throat> I need like a more of a, I have this color. I just bought a new one of these. I love this as an extra mixing color, and it is, if I can find it here in my pile. Oh, here it is. I love this color too. This is Montserrat Orange by Williamsburg. I think I bought several new Williamsburg colors. I'm gonna mix that with a um, little bit of cad orange. Oh, that's really pretty, isn't it? A little lighter and cooler. I watched a fun, um, like, little kind of documentary. I think it was a documentary, not a show, about Liberty of London, the department store in England last night. It was really good. It was neat to learn about all their merchandising. I hope they're still in business. It was, I think, done in 19... 
2019. Oh, uh, Cyrus, this is a piece of um, uh, marble, like from the, I got it at the place where you buy kitchen countertops. I bought it when I did Art in Bloom, when I filmed my course, I was worried about um, glare. So this was a nice solution of a, of a palette that wouldn't cause glare like a piece of glass would. And then I just kind of fell in love with it and still use it. Oh, let me get a little bit Montserrat, more Montserrat orange out. Yeah, I, so I was saying one of these days I'll have to try that thing where I let people come in the video and talk or show what you're working on or something, but I'm afraid if I do it, then I won't be able to save what I'm making. Save the video. Oh my gosh, I had such a hard time um, saving this last week. Mary Eileen, I went in there to, and bought Christmas ornaments. Oh, you did? Oh my gosh, I thought that was so much fun. That place looks so amazing. I would love to do that. All right, I need, I'm going to put a little bit of Viridian out here. I need some greens. Oh, my goodness. I need, this is about dried out. So oh, there it comes. <laughs> and I get more than I wanted. You really, oil paint goes a long way. It's not cheap. Not inexpensive, I guess is the right word for that. But um, it sure does go a long way. Um, so I want to make that darker and I want to desaturate it. So I'm going to put a little bit of red in there so it gets less green looking, kind of graze it down a bit. I'm going to put a little bit of black in there too. Now that went a little too red and this green is just a little A little um, darken that a little bit more. That'll work for my dark green area. Time to get yes, it's time. What do you, what do you, want color you're making? I don't know what you mean. Sap green. Oh yeah, I need to put more sap green out here. Actually, that's a good idea. Oh, what color was that? It was cobalt green, I think. I, yeah, that was a little crazy. I need to throw that away. Oil paint rarely gets to the point that you need to throw it out, but um, uh, some of these paints I've had, I bet some of these paints I might have had since college, which is 100 years ago, at least. Get this out of the way. I'm going to make some light green. Um... I don't need a lot of color because I'm really going to try to just put down bits, like bits of color. Um, so I need like background and I need the foreground color shadow. So I was, um, um, no wait, I need another color. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I can never remember what it is. I think it's this tort gray. Yes, that's it. <clears throat> that's it. Good morning, Helen. London is open now. Oh, I know. Isn't that great? So I was um, on the phone yesterday with a, a guy who called about me maybe doing a retreat in... In France like how fun would that be so let me know what any of you if I did something like that planned a treat in Europe for it wouldn't be until um, next year till 2023 like maybe in the spring like it's hard to know about putting that much energy into something because would anyone even want to go like you know the world's a little crazy right now, but I mean, gosh, wouldn't that be wonderful to go to France? It just sounded lovely, and the guy was wonderful. The place looks great. It would be 10 days, although I don't, I've never been away from home for 10, 
10 days in my life. Um, might get a little homesick, but um, it would it would be fun, wouldn't it? Like a dream come true to be able to go to Europe. I haven't been to France since... Oh, good. Oh, good. Yes. All right. All right. Because he wants me to pick dates, so maybe I will do that. Um, I haven't been to France since I was in high school. I went my summer of my... Um, when did I go? Summer of my junior year. Now, is that going to be too harsh and too cool? I don't know. I'm going to let that go because I don't know if I'm going to like that or not, but it could always shift it. That's maybe too white. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so he said he'd been following me for a long time, um, and we had a FaceTime yesterday and talked about all the details, and now... I think I need a new one of these little grippy things. All right, everybody can see that okay? Is it above the words? Yeah, last week I couldn't download this to put it onto YouTube. I had the hardest time with it. All right, I'm going to do the flowers. How much long to use your color? Oh, it lasts a really long time. Oh, maybe. Um, I think it was called like paranoid retreats or something like that. It was a French word. It could maybe be the same company. I, last year before um, COVID, last year, two years ago before COVID started, I was seriously talking about doing one in Italy. And all but picked the week. And then COVID happened and it all went away. And I haven't talked to them since. But, <clears throat> I don't know. France sounds lovely, too. I mean, either one would be oh so much fun. And I guess I've got nothing to lose. If I see now, I'm getting too detailed. I want to put big chunks of color in. Like that. I might end up hating it, and I might end up loving it. But that's what I want to do. Big chunks like that. <clears throat> Per Paragord. Yes. Have you been there, Mary Eileen? Do you know what it is? You've been everywhere, haven't you? I want to go traveling with you. <clears throat> with you and Ellen. And I did think of somewhere that I could do a retreat here. I, I had reached out to my friend where I had done it before and I didn't hear back from her. So I was thinking outside of the box and Actually, I think I I do have an idea of somewhere that I could do it here. <clears throat> Mary Eileen, you're going in September. Oh, how fun. Well then will you still want to come with me? Well you'll know all the all the things, how it is, um, what it's like, and who's teaching the class in September. Or the it's not really a class. It sounds like you could do whatever you can. Dordogne, region of France. Um, it sounds like, like I could do anything. Like we could go on little day trips and take photos and come back and paint. And it just sounds perfect. All right. Big, chunky colors. Isn't that funny that I have to keep reminding myself of that? It's when you paint a certain way, it's hard sometimes to change your pattern. <laughs> the Ree Valley is lovely. Oh, how fun. Mmm. <clears throat> Oh, that would be so fun in Rehoboth Beach, but I don't have a place to have it. Rehoboth is so expensive. We actually always rented a house there since I was in... My mother died when I was in um, seventh grade. <clears throat> and then my dad started renting a house at the beach with my... Kind of to keep us all close. Because my sisters are six, were 16 and 18 years older than me. And we would all go to the beach in the summer for two weeks. Um, for my whole life. I think I've only missed going to Rehoboth on vacation maybe two or three years of ever. 
but um, we didn't re rent our house this year. Many castles with flower gardens. Oh my gosh, how beautiful would that be? But it would be fun. I would love to do it in Rehoboth. I did apply to the Rehoboth Outdoor Art Show. I just did that Yes, No, I didn't. Did I do that yesterday? No, I think I already did that before. I think that's one that's due ahead of time. Kind of carving out around some of these shapes. <clears throat> And farmer's markets. Oh my gosh, I want to go. Yeah, the call, and it's really that color is so pretty. It's like that purplish, grayish kind of color. My gosh, Kathy, I would love to do that. Did I talk to you before about stopping by to visit your mother when I was out walking last year? Is that you I was talking to? I never I did mention it when I was out for a walk one day and then I never got to do it. I would love to do one in Rehoboth. If you help me figure that out, I would love to do that. That would be so much fun. Yeah, Rehoboth is a very special place to me. I also applied to do their, they have a little, a new little art show in the park there across from um, Egg, that restaurant, and that little municipal park. And I applied for that too. I don't know if I'll get in or not. We'll talk to some peeps. All right, Kathy, that would be great. Um, the neutrality of the background makes the, yes, that's what I want to do. Thank you. That is my goal not get lost in it, put down bits of color, keep the neutrals, and allow the, the colors to be the star of the show. This is a little distracting here. Sorry, I'm thinking I gave myself a challenge again. I try to do things um, a little out of my comfort zone sometimes just to keep it interesting when you're watching me. But the downside of that is I have to think a little bit harder about what I'm doing. Tricia, yes, I can share my... I'll put the reference photo in you know, on my blog. Um, Ala Prima. I would say... Um, that all my paintings pretty much are a la prima. It's more, a la prima just means you're doing it in one sitting. Um, and I generally try to do that all the time. I would even love to do large paintings the same way, but um, I have trouble with that. I have trouble, it's, I find it challenging to uh, Do them all in one sitting, large, larger pieces. I have to give them kind of more thought, but then they lose a little bit of the spontaneity that I love. And I'm still using this big chunky brush, which like getting in those little bits is challenging. But that's okay, challenging is good. Now, do you find the background distracting? Let me smooth out a little bit. Now, let's see. I ought to keep going with it and then decide. <clears throat> um, I, have, I love the roughness of what that looks like down there. Isn't that fun? And it's just nothing but a little bit of color and like almost nothing happening down there. I can't leave it quite that loose.
So I always love like looking at other people's art and um, <clears throat> learning from it, maybe experimenting with styles and then taking it, you know, to my own, adding my own touch to it so that it shifts, if you know what I mean. Yeah, this, I love this brush. It does, it does carve out those shapes. I'm trying to be very thoughtful and simple with it. Okay, I need one more. Dark in here. <clears throat> Um, all right, let's do a little. Big, chunky colors, Kim. <laughs> oh, this brush. I'm sorry. This is called uh, Rosemary and Company number 12 eclipse short flat i would say this is probably my number one favorite brush and it's big it's it's like an inch across they make them in different sizes this is the largest one i always wish for the same brush in like i would love the same brush in four inches but they don't make one like that so even in my large paintings often i'll use the same brush let me try the whites in here and see if it's too Oh, I like that. Getting too close to my reference image here. <clears throat> Carol says, I'm amazed that you use just one brush with so many colors. Yeah, I don't, while well, I'm cleaning it, I have a paper towel right here in my hand. And I clean it. I think that it getting a little bit dirty with the other colors kind of keeps it cohesive, but you don't want it to get too dirty. So I do clean it a lot. And there are times when I might um, switch to another brush if I feel like I'm making a muddy mess, but it doesn't happen very often. It would work for acrylics too or or should it be different the brush you mean is that what you're asking me um i don't know why it wouldn't work for acrylics but in general i'd say that oil painting brushes are more expensive and i find that they last longer when i do like when i paint with acrylics my brushes get messed up so quickly that i wouldn't want to buy a really expensive brush to do that but that might just be me because I mean, I can make a mess like nobody's business. I love the looseness of what's happening in there. I think I'm just going to kind of leave that. Yeah, it's wor the tabletop worked out okay. Even, well, let me see. This might need a little. Yep, I don't want to get too... I don't know what I want to get. I don't want to get too tight with it. I want to let it be loose. I want those brush strokes to show. So now I need to do some of my lights. I didn't mix a real pale, like yellow for up there. I'm going to leave some chunky wetness on there, too. Are you using just white, too, in your foreground? Rosemary, that was mostly white. I did mix, I think, a little bit to keep it really cool. I mixed a little bit of this old Holland violet gray into that. And I do see, I want to. And I do have my um, workshop coming up in, in Connecticut, too. That's in May. So if anybody's interested in doing that, I'm going to try and pay attention to promoting that a little bit. I'd started to plan that last bef before COVID, and 
or no, it was just last year, but people were still too cautious. And um, I was a little nervous about driving up there. Now this time I'm going to fly. I'm not good at driving like five hours. It's just too far for me. By myself, anyway. I've learned that driving to Pittsburgh. All right. What else do I need to do? I want to keep that chunky in there. Oh, let me see. Have you ever heard of the artist Lisa Darry Kennedy? Yes, I love her work. She does really loose flowers. Yeah, what Lisa does is she buys like flowers on Monday and paints from life. And hers are very loose and she does, yeah, very kind of luscious free strokes. They're very simple and she does one every day. Yeah, I love her work. There's a little, um, now I almost feel like I'm at a point where I should try not to even look at my reference and figure out just what the painting needs because it's a little abstract. Oh, right here's where I wanted to have that white spot there. Um, I still need lightest lights in here and kind of a pale. Um, let's see. I didn't mix enough. Now wait one second. I feel like my light color's a little too... Um, too dry. Um, all right, now I need to look for my lightest lights. Still using the same big brush. And yeah, I'm loving how it's looking. I need some very light, I need lightest lights in all of my flowers. And then, and I want to keep it simple. I keep telling myself that. When you paint a certain way, it's hard to kind of undo that and think about the painting in another way and letting it evolve differently. Um, So where is everybody tuning in from today? Um, I have this very nice pale highlight right here. And I want to push this back in just a little bit right here. Whoops, got too much of my brush. It was hanging a little. I don't know. I might be finished. I don't want to go too far. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Yep, I use an app called Grid. My Oh, I love the abstract look. Yes, so do I. It is fun. Gorgeous. Wonderful, thank you. Seeing if anybody asked me a question, it wasn't. Oh, I forgot all about the pigment sticks. I was so excited to get started on this. 
to try this style that I completely forgot to use the pigment sticks. And it's no worse for the wear, I don't think so. Feel like it's leaning or anything. That little thing there in my shadow is driving me a little crazy. So let me just fix that, this. I don't like this. Um, there's a little bleedy area. Now I got it a little pink in there, but that's all right. That is fine. Anything you see that I should pay attention to? Do I have any big chunks of white showing? Um, anywhere that I need a lightest light going on? And then I'll look where everybody's tuning in from. I'm not paying attention right now. I don't know. I don't I don't want to mess with it. I like it. It's different for me. Um Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm finished. I'm gonna sign it and then I'll show it to you up close. Oops. It's like that white down there is like butter. It's like very thick and I see that I have um it's on the side of my panel. So I went into my frame shop, my favorite framer here in my town yesterday to get a couple things framed and and uh, I love, she let me go down the basement. I love doing that and I picked out some like remnants of old, cool old, really thick frames um, that she had from things she'd framed years ago. I'm like, this could be one that would look neat in one of those. A little dark over here. No, I'm going to stop. I'm going to mess it up. I just know myself. Okay, so Common, Alabama, Nashville, Michigan, North Carolina, Newport News, Virginia. Ellen's moving soon. When are you moving? Pensacola, Florida, North Carolina. Ola Ruby. Outside Atlanta and Cartersville, Ontario, Connecticut. What colors did you use in the gray background? <laughs> That's a tricky question. Um, I think that was mostly um, <laughs> this tort gray. And I did a little bit of, of this um, old Holland gray green and some other, just kind of mix some other things in it. Do you think the background looks too busy? Do I need to calm that down a little bit? I think I might need to calm it down a little bit. Do I have time? Oh, it's only 8.44. I have a little bit of time. Debbie says, what advice would you give someone that wants to paint this loose <laughs> practice? The funny thing is that painting loose looks easy. I can paint... I can paint very tight. Like I can paint things because I went to school for graphic design and had to paint things very realistically. I would say realism is probably more my comfort zone and painting loose is still a never ending practice for me to learn. So I'm just taking my brush and I feel like there's too many brush strokes happening. It's just distracting. Like I want you to look at the flowers, not at the background. Like I don't mind there being some strokes. There was just a few too many. I felt like my eye kept getting caught. So when you are working on a painting, you have to like step back and think about the journey of your eye, um, what you're seeing, what you're thinking about, um, whether it needs like a pause anywhere Parts of it are too busy. Things are distracting. I got paint on my brush. I have to clean it off again. Like, and I also don't want lines going in a certain direction either. Sometimes I find the background to be just as challenging as the subject. That quieted it a little bit. Sometimes I could do a painting and come back to it days later and see something that I need to adjust or fix. Nice thing about oil paints is that's easy to do. What is with acrylics too? Because acrylics are completely dry and you're just starting fresh. Like I really had fun playing with acrylics with my sketchbook this 
this month. Oh, and for anyone in my Inspiring Art group, I'm going to be um, doing a fun Valentine project at um, 11 today. Got to get some work done. All right, I think I like this. is still a little busy right here. All right, that quieted it. Let's see. What think of that. All right, yeah, that's better. I think all those um, made a touch of bright yellow on the right flower in here. Really bright yellow. I could do that. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I don't think it needs anything more. Okay. Needs a signature. Look at my signature down there. It's it's in the thickness of like it looks like um oh I see a little of my line there. I don't want that. Now wait one more second. I'm not as sure I'm finished this time as I normally am. Usually I'm pretty sure when I'm done, but because it's a different style, I guess. But this, I can see my uh, my grid line under there. I don't want that. Now, see, I should be, I should just stop because now I'm fussing with it. And usually when you start to fuss, it doesn't, it doesn't improve. Very rarely does it improve. Okay, I'm not going to touch it anymore. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, Anita. Thanks, Sandy. I do too. It is pretty merry. Um, I would say, well, I did forget. I totally forgot the, um, gosh, I missed a lot here. <laughs> I was thinking too hard, I guess. Um, oh, everybody liked the background. Well, do you like it better now? Be honest. Or did you like it when it was busier looking? I'm always learning. <laughs> yeah, it says stop. Thanks, Ellen. So, yeah, I do too. I would say I did forget the pigment sticks. I think that would have been fun. So next time I will do that. And I love the big chunky color. I didn't allow much of my underpainting to show through there are a couple little spots where it does you know like I even like the roughness of what's happening in there but those big chunks of color they're just so much fun aren't they all right so so that was fun so it's always good to push yourself out of the comfort zone and play and try new things and oh this is my oh here I'll show you this too Oh, this is my big one. No, wait. <clears throat> so I needed to, I had some um, petals over here that were too, um, too much in the background. So I had to pull these forward and I darkened down in here a little bit more. And, um, and I'm working, I'm, you know, doing the edges too. I have to do the bottom of it still too, but it's getting there. I really... That has a lot of like those kind of underneath things. I love when you see all that, like the details of the fun little pops of color and things like that. So that was fun. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I will save this um, in YouTube. Hopefully it won't take me half the day to do that. And it'll be on my, um, you can find it through the blog on my website too. So, thanks for coming and hanging out with me, guys. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks. Bye.